Hi everyone. Okay, we'll get started then, and um, any latecomers can just catch up as they go on. <coughs> so I should introduce myself first. My name is Andy Turner. Um, a few of you might have met me or know me. I lead the uh, Archer CSE team. Um, this work on uh, parallel I/O performance originally came about because last year, at the start of the year, we were thinking about uh, what sort of things the CSE team should be looking into to help users. And one of the big things that we'd heard from users that was a problem, and that and we ourselves knew was a problem, was understanding parallel I/O performance um, on systems, what you can expect to get, what you need to do to get good performance, and all these sort of things. So this project and the work I'm going to talk about here um, arose out of those discussions. So what I should also say is please feel free to um, stop me and ask questions along the way. There is a little symbol where you can raise your hand. That's probably the easiest way to do it. But you can also just shout or type something in the chat window if you prefer to ask questions in that way. Um, let me know if you have any problems with the audio quality going forward or any problems for you in the slides. So let's go start off. So the next slide is just a Creative Commons slide. You can take this material and reuse it under certain conditions. And there's the standard logo zoo for all the people who are involved in Archer and funded, who have um, helped fund Archer, put the Archer service together. Um, particularly, before I started, I wanted to thank um, various people because I always forget at the end, so I like to do it at the start. So in terms of actually contributing to this work, um, a lot of the runs, a lot of putting together of the results has been done by my colleague at EPCC, Dominic Sloan Murphy. And, um, also, um, David Henty has contributed a lot of the uh, material and a lot of discussions and understanding of the results. And Harvey Richardson at Cray, too, has been, I've had very useful discussions to try and understand what's going on on the file systems and parallel IO. I should also thank uh, Lydia Heck, uh, who is the, um, opera, uh, the, the manager of the Dirac Cosma system in Durham um, for time on their system to use their GPFS file systems compared to the Archer Lustre results. And you'll see some of those comparisons later on. And uh, also thanks to Brian Lawrence from Jasmine. We did also do some runs on the Jasmine um, data, data store down uh, in the south of England. Um, I haven't included the results in this uh, presentation because the, the other two systems that are included, the RDF and Jasmine, um, are both quite small scale systems and that's not quite what I wanted to focus on in this presentation. Okay, so why did we do this? I've sort of mentioned this um, a bit at the start, but actually IO performance is becoming more and more critical for HPC application performance as applications scale up. Quite often people have done a very good job of um, optimizing their parallel performance or, uh, in terms of compute or even memory access, such that as they scale up, those aren't the things limiting them anymore. It's now um, the IO that can be limiting, limiting them. And many applications have an IO bound phase, if not, if it, even if it doesn't dominate um, the whole application. So we want to be able to ask questions like, what's the maximum performance you can expect from the Archer Parallel File System in production? So we have um, a knowledge of what the theoretical maximum performance is on Archer because that's the rating of the uh, file system. Um, but what actually, but there is quite, a, there's not much data out there actually, in fact, on what um, performance looks like on a file system in production. Most benchmarking and runs on file systems are done when or other users are off the system for one reason or another. Um, and we also really wanted to compare to other HPC parallel IO setups. And we managed to do that thanks to the, the, Cosmo, the Dirac Cosma people. Um, they've got a large GPFS installation that we've done some comparisons to. In particular for Ar Archer, what are the best um, parallel IO schemes, file layouts, Lustre striping settings, which are under user control on Lustre, uh, but you don't have so much control on GPFs. What are the best settings that uh, people should use for different scenarios and what are the preconditions for getting good performance. Um, how do things like MPIIO and the libraries that are built generally on top of MPIIO, NetCDF and HDF5, how does their write performance, parallel write performance compare? And how do they compare to a very naive file per process um, scheme for doing parallel IO? And I think what we'd also seen was that HPC users, application developers, and even um, 
system operators and vendors often poorly understand parallel I.O. performance in terms of what good performance is on a particular file system, not just peak performance when there's nobody on it, um, what do particular applications do and what's important uh, for them, and also what do the sort of parallel I.O. benchmarks are out there, what are they actually illustrating uh, about the performance of the file system. So this was our motivation for taking on this work. And actually, we've been working on this for quite a long time now. Um, and the data you see today is a combination of lots of exploratory stuff before we become, come to a place where we can understand the data. So there was a large period of time at the start of the project trying to understand what the different benchmarks offered and what the strengths and weaknesses were and then how to run them on the file system and how to start interpreting the results and what parameters matter but we'll talk a bit more about that later on so there are there's one commonly used really commonly used um, parallel io benchmark called ior um, it depends you may or may not be familiar with it it's, uh, it's widely used and actually it's widely used when people procure systems as the sort of um, yardstick used to measure the performance of the file system uh, when you buy it so that you know you've got what you paid for. And it supports a variety of models, uh, MPIO, HDF5, NetCDF, uh, multiple files. Um, and th at the start of this process, this were, we thought, well, we would just, just be using IOR to do the benchmarking in the first instance, really. Um, but we found that it wasn't really as suitable as we thought for um, the investigations we wanted to do. And there were two main reasons for this, and I'll elaborate a bit further on this in a couple of slides, but the software is pretty opaque, actually, with many, many different input options. So depending on what the options are set, this can actually hinder an understanding on what I.O. operations are actually being performed and understanding um, the results that come out of I.O.R. And actually, it's difficult sometimes to work out what options to set on IOR to reproduce um, user types of IO, so the sort of I parallel IO that typically user applications would do. And also feeding into this, the, the naive parallel IO patterns that are implemented in IOR don't really provide a good representation of what we found in terms of what people actually do in real applications in terms of parallel IO. So it made it very difficult um, to interpret the results from IOR. So we started looking and thinking about other benchmarks. Um, and for a while, there was this uh, program at EPCC that had been written by um, both David Henty and Adrian Jackson. It was called Bench.io. And it's a simple Fortran program that does parallel I.O. in a 3D of a 3D distributed data set to a single shared file. From now on, or quite often in this talk, you'll see uh, the two, two parallel I.O. schemes referred to by these acronyms. So SSF is single shared file. And Bench.io can also do MPIO, HDF5, and NetCDF the same, in the same way as IOR. Um, but it has a number of advantages over IOR. One is that it's got a very small number of options, just essentially the data set size and the number of processes. So that makes it very simple to understand what the program is doing. And as we'll see in the uh, next couple of slides, the data distribution is much closer to many um, IO-bound user applications. The disadvantages at the moment, it does um, write performance only, so it only investigates write performance, um, but we do have plans to add um, read performance benchmarking to the benchmark. And this, ben this benchmark is uh, freely available on GitHub at this location. It's open source software. You can get it, you can play around with it, you can modify it, um, do whatever you want. But we are actively working on um, updating doc both documentation and um, providing more results and um, increasing the capabilities of Bench.io. So I talked a bit about one of the reasons that you wouldn't use IOR is to do the data distribution. And this is slide supposed to give you an idea of why that is. So up here, so, so IOR is like LIMPAC. For those of you who are aware, LIMPAC is um, what's generally, is the benchmark that's generally used to assess the um, compute performance of an HP, a parallel HPC system. So it's quite synthetic. Um, it may be corresponds in some scenarios to what people are doing, but in really doing on the system, but not really, not, not as often as you would like. IOR is similar for um, parallel IO. So it's day to day compositions designed to measure maximum IO bandwidth rather than the bandwidth you get um, when you're running a real application. So, for example, if you imagine you've got 64 data elements on eight processes, 
what the IOR file will look like is eight large blocks of eight contiguous items. So it's a, you know, a block of data from one process, or a block of data from the next, block of data from the next, which is a really nice layout and is actually the perfect layout you would want for getting the maximum performance out of your file system in a power, from a parallel program. But unfortunately, not many programs actually um, just have their data distributed in that way. Much more common is the scheme that Bench.io uses, which is um, a 3D grid um, decomposition. So here you can imagine a four by four grid split evenly across eight processes. So each one gets two by two by two. And the actual layout of the data leads to this more, much more complicated layout, right? There's processor zero has a bit here, a bit here, a bit here, a bit here, processor one. So it's much more interleaved. So what this means is that if you've got um, a parallel um, I.O. system, it needs to do a lot of redistribution of the data, moving the data around before we can write it to disks. And there's a lot of trade-offs to be made for how much do you move the data to compared to the block size you're writing and all these sort of things. And it's these challenging aspects of parallel I.O. that um, cause problems for user programs. So Bench I.O. doesn't really model how users actually use, sorry, IOR doesn't really model how users actually use um, parallel I.O. on a um, AC system. So we went forward with Bench I.O. I mean, so I've summarized that in a few slides. That, that was quite a large block of work, actually, was to understand the differences between IOR and Bench I.O. and what the benchmarks were showing and why you'd use one rather than the other. And that was quite a large block of work before we even started collecting data in earnest to try and understand what was going on. Um, and finally, so as well as the single shared file, which I've talked about, there is another very naive um, way of doing parallel IO, and that's just for every process to write data to its own file. So you get, if you have a thousand um, processes, you'll end up with a thousand files. And we implemented this in a Bench IO FPP, which is also on the website. Um, essentially uses the same decomposition as Bench IO, um, but each process, instead of writing to a shared file, writes to its own Fortran binary file. Um, at the moment, it doesn't have HDF5 or NetCDF support, but we want to add them in. And we have to, you have to be very careful when you're doing um, Fortran binary writes in a way that you have to be less careful of with MPIO to ensure that um, buffering on the local clients is not used when writing. It's not used, so you need to write large amounts of data per process. Um, but that's just a slightly subtle detail. So we have two uh, schemes here that we're going to investigate. One is the single shared file using something like using MPIO in this case. Um, I'm going to talk about the results for MPIO because we haven't had a chance to analyze properly the results for NetCDF and HDF5 yet. And the file per process model, which is very naive, very simple. Um, and look at the performance between them. I should say that when we started out, it's generally considered in the um, HPC world that um, the sh single shared file um, way of doing things is a superior model, a superior scheme to the file per process scheme. Okay. So what systems did we look at this on? Well, obviously this is an Archer webinar with Archer CSE team. So we were interested in Archer, which is a Luster file system. It's a Cray selection. It has a theoret theoretical peak bandwidth for the file system we look at of around 30. Um, gigabytes per second, gigabytes per second, and the other big system we had access to um, was in Durham is the Cosmo Five system. This is a GPFS, IBM GPFS file system provided by uh, Yen, with a theoretical peak bandwidth of about two thirds of that, about 20 gigabytes per second. And um, there was a couple of small scale systems. The RDF here, although it has a large amount of storage, um, the um, where you access it, the amount of power process, number of power processes you can use to access the file system is quite small because it's not a large HPC system attached to it. Um, so that was based on a single node, and that's DDN GPFS as well. And we had access to Jasmine uh, down south, which has a Panassas parallel file system, um, and that only used small process count. So I'm not really reporting those results here because they're not um, interesting for what I was like, trying to illustrate around. Um, large-scale HPC parallel I.O. performance. Okay, so and a little bit about the setup. So whenever we do an MPI I.O. in the shared 
single shared file model, we were using um, MPIO collective operations in all cases. Because our previous experience, we have a previous white paper on the Archer website um, with some initial investigations into Power IO performance, um, showed that you have to turn on MPIO collectives um, to be able to get any useful performance out of MPIO with complex schemes. If one of the problems with IOR was that if you turn on MPIO collectives, it actually makes it go slower. And that's because the layout is already um, ideal in IOR for uh, parallel file processing. So you're just adding extra overhead. But in real life, you have to use uh, MPIO collective operations to get useful performance in a single shared file model. Um, all the compute nodes are fully populated. So on Archer, this corresponds to us using 24 cores per node. So 24 processes writing per node. Um, on Cosmo, that corresponds to 16 processes writing per node. All the runs were performed, all runs were performed during production um, because we, we are actually here interested in what is the performance that users actually see day to day. I'm not interested. I know what the theoretical peak performance of the system is. It's not really as interesting to see it when the system's quiet. So we were, so all the runs are subject to the same contention um, as all users on the system and the same variation of performance is all used on the system. And we also ran um, on Archer anyway a number of performance variation tests and we tried to run approximately three day intervals uh, at random times to try and ram randomize across weekdays and times so we weren't investigating the performance at the same time and day every week. And we have quite a lot of results and you'll see that in a minute for the Archer ones that show the distribution of performance. Okay. So I'm going to split this, the rest of this talk into three sections. I'm going to talk about um, single shared file performance using MPIIO. I'm going to talk about file per process performance using uh, simple uh, Fortran binary writes from each process to their own file. And then I'm going to talk about um, some comparisons between the two of them before finally drawing some conclusions. So in terms of single shared file, right, there's going to be quite a few, uh, a few plots like this in in this um, presentation, so or in this webinar, so I will um, take a moment to explain what these are showing here. So each of the dots here is corresponds to a single run of the benchmark. So this type of plot here is supposed to show the distribution of performance um, for uh, a number across all the different ones of the benchmark. Up on the Y scale here, we have the write performance in um, maybe bytes per second. And across the bottom, uh, number of nodes. Okay, and this one's for Archer Luster. So we have two schemes here shown by the green dots and the blue dots, which are slightly offset for each other just so they didn't get mixed in. Um, so you can see what the differences are. The difference between these two um, setups is that the green blobs use the default stripe count of four on the Archer Luster file systems, and the blue blobs use the maximum stripe count, um, which is used by setting the count to minus one. That uses the maximum number of stripes possible. What you can do on Archer Luster is you have essentially per file control over how many stripes you use and what stripe size, what the stripe size is. Generally, though, you tend to set it on a directory, and then all the files inherit that. And what you can see here is with the default stripe count, you can't get anywhere near um, good performance, even when you're using all the things you should do, MPIO collectives, writing to a single shared file, um, lots of process, lots of um, individual processes. The maximum performance you can get is about two and a half maybe byte, maybe bytes per second, megabytes per second, which isn't very good on a file system of this has a peak of um, 30 gig per second. To get that sort of performance or to access that performance, you have to use the maximum stripe count you can on the, on the system. And that's the first lesson for Luster file systems anyway on, on Arches. You have to use the maximum stripe count to be able to access the performance when you're writing to a single shared file using MPI IO. Okay, you can see one of the prices you pay for um, doing that is you get um, quite a wide performance variation. Okay, so you can see here for when you're using 32 nodes um, and full striping, your performance can vary from uh, 15 maybe bytes per second 
all the way down to around two megabytes per second, with the average somewhere in the middle here, probably about eight or nine um, maybe writes per second and this performance variation I think is just due to uh, contention with other users on the system who are using um, the parallel file system. As you increase the number of stripes you're using you increase um, the amount of cont potential contention you have because you're accessing more devices and um, there's a higher chance of bumping into somebody, uh, somebody else who's doing um, heavy IO somewhere so you end up with this large performance variation. What we'd like to do in future, or one of the things I'd like to do in future, is investigate some of the intermediate values here because the maximum stripe, uh, maximum number of stripes on Archer, I think is around 40 or 50 um, stripes. So this is quite a big jump from four to 40 or 50. This is an order of magnitude jump in number of stripes. So there might be somewhere in between where you can still get the good performance, but you um, reduce the chances of contention. Yeah, but we haven't had a chance to investigate that fully yet. But the first lesson is you need maximum stripe sizing when you're doing MPIO, single shared file, um, to be able to get anywhere near um, good performance. And you can see here the maximum performance you can generally get in production is around half of the theoretical peak, which was 30. So this is around 15, around 15 gigabytes a second. Okay. If I can fit. Compare then to um, the, the runs on um, Cosma, which is the GPFS. So here I've taken the uh, best results on Archer, which are the uh, maximum striping, and compared them to exactly the same runs on the Cosma GPFS file system. And you can see their scaling is much the same um, in terms of the maximum performance anyway. You may be get a bit more performance out on Archer. It has a slightly higher, it has a higher peak by about um, 50%. So it's, uh, it's 30 gigabytes a second. The peak performance of the GPFS at um, Durham is around 20 gigabytes per second. Uh, but you do see also that there's probably less variation in the GPFS performance. I, I can't be 100% certain about this because there, we have less data points on the uh, GPFS file system. So any conclusions drawn in terms of variation of um, performance need to be taken with a little bit of a pinch of salt because we haven't had a chance to do as many runs on um, the Cosmos system as we have on the Archer system. But it does look like um, the GPFS gives you more consistent performance. And but you want, one interesting thing you can see actually on the GPFS is that their maximum performance again is around 50% of their peak, the same, similar to the Archer one, the Archer uh, file system, and their performance turns the the perform, peak performance on the GPFS file system turns over at around 64 nodes is where you can get. Whereas Archer, you can probably still scale out to 256 nodes um, and still get um, good performance. Okay, so that was the single shared file, and we're going to do exactly the same um, and compare the file per process, just using Fortran binary writes. So this is again on Archer. These are just the results from Archer. And you can see we have less data points here. That's because we've been doing uh, the file per process for less time than we have done for the single shared file, which we've been running for quite a long time now. The three different colors here are for the three different, stri for three different striped accounts this time. The blue dots are for single striped. That's no striping at all. And if you use no striping at all on single shared file, you wouldn't be able to get any useful performance at all. Okay, you would get, you'd be limited um, to around one gig per second of performance maximum. And then we also have in green, the maximal striping minus one and red, the default striping on Archer uh, Luster, which is four. And you can see there's not a huge amount of variation now between the different stripe settings and the performance. Um, you're getting on the system. And this is essentially because um, the parallelism here is coming from having multiple files and each of the multiple files could be assigned to a different um, OST. So essentially it's using a different stripe, even if you have a striping of one. So you get the parallelism through the number of files rather than from striping across lots of different uh, components in the parallel 
file system. Um, the other interesting thing you can see to, compared to the um, single shared file is that your performance rapidly increases up to four, to, by the time you're at four nodes, you're essentially at the peak performance um, for file per process, which is around, again, 50% of the theoretical peak performance in the file system. Um, one problem you have, especially when you go to the higher core counts with this scheme, this file per process scheme, if you're using lots of stripes, is it becomes quite unreliable here. We do have some data here, but we also had a lot of um, failures um, in the middle of the write process. And that is simply because you, there's so much, so many things in flight using so many stripes and so many files simultaneously that the file system starts to struggle um, to keep up with that. And you start to get timeout errors um, with operations on the file system. So I certainly wouldn't recommend using um, multiple stripes um, for, fi for um, a file per process scheme on Archer. I'll cover that in a minute as well. Now, if we compare, this is now the comparison between Archer Luster and GPFS on Cosmo. And the trends are quite similar um, here, actually. You have, a, for low numbers of nodes, you quite steeply get, or quite quickly get up to your maximum performance, and then you plateau in some way. This is the Archer results for single striped, and you don't have control of the striping on Luster. Again, you can see, um, compared, compared to um, the Luster file system on Archer, the GPFS file system seems to have a smaller um, variation in uh, performance, but this could be due to a number of reasons. I guess, as I said before, one reason might be something in the file system itself. Another reason could be um, the file system on the Durham system is less heavily used, or there's fewer users um, using that file system, which would lead to less contention, which would lead to less variability, and so on and so forth. It's actually quite hard to pick out where the variability comes from um, in terms of number of users who you're contending with. Um, but that's something we're going to try and look at, but it is quite a difficult thing to tease out from these systems. Um, but again, you can see we get to about 50% of the performance on Plateau and similar on Archer and on and GPFS. So both of them seem to behave in quite a similar way um, for file per process. Okay, so I've talked about the two schemes now. It's a single shared file using MPI IO and naive file per process where each process just writes to its own file. And if you remember back at the start of the webinar, I said that um, in general, in HPC circles, it has been assumed that uh, the single shared file uh, scheme should be superior to the file per process scheme. Okay. So this plot here um, now is just, instead of distributions of performance, this is the maximum performance at each node count um, for the two different schemes on the two different um, systems we were looking at. So the dashed lines are both on the Cosma GPFS system and the solid lines are both on the Archer Luster file system. And um, the red line on Archer is single shared file, so that's the MPI IO version. And um, the blue line is file per process. And similarly on uh, Cosma, the purple line is single shared file, MPI IO. The green line is the uh, farm process. And what you can see here is if you look at the performance, this seems to say that there's not much um, advantage in terms of performance anyway to using um, single shared file MPIO over um, using a file per process scheme. Especially at low core counts, you should, it, it seems to say that you're always going to outperform. Um, single shared file using file per process. And at high core counts, where we would have expected, I think, before we started this work to the, for the file per process performance to start dropping off and uh, become much poorer than the single shared file, that's simply not the case um, on modern file system, on these two modern file systems we've looked at anyway. And the profiles are remarkably similar between um, GPFS and Luster. They both have the same sort of uh, profile, the uh, single shared files gradually increase to a peak and then drop off. File per process increase very quickly um, to the peak and then plateau at that performance um, for the, uh, as you increase um, the core count or the number of nodes you're using um, to write the data out. 
Um, and this, in some sense, is due to what you're doing here, right? So if you compare, look at the Archer, it's, it's sort of explainable in the fact, if you look at the Archer results here, we have two nodes, that's uh, 48 cores, um, and we're writing 48 files. Each of those could live on a separate stripe in the FARPA process. Uh, scheme. So you've got a lot of parallelism to write across a lot of different stripes. So even with maximal striping, uh, depending on your block size, then in the single shared file, it's harder to access that parallelism. Okay, and they bec only become competitive uh, once you get up to, in certainly in the single shared file, once you get up to the number of nodes that is around the number of um, the maximum number of stripes system. Okay. That's when their performance starts to be, look very similar. Okay, so and that although the same, you don't have the same control over striping and things like that on uh, GPFS because there's not the same level of um, user control. Um, it shows a very similar profile underneath. But it seems the file systems, I guess, contrary to our expectations and maybe the uh, general feeling in the HPC community, is the FARPA process can continue to perform as you go to higher core counts. It doesn't seem to drop off in performance as maybe people expected it would to, even on a, on a production file system um, such as this and contending with all the other users as well. So this sort of summarizes what I just said. There's a simple file per process gives better performance at lower node counts and is similar to shared file higher node counts. Um, one of the things I mentioned earlier is you should always use single striping for file per process and Archer where you have control over such a thing because you do get random failures due to excessive metadata operations or file system operations um, otherwise, which can cause your writes to fail. But there are some disadvantages. It looks here as like, well, why would you ever use single shared file? Why don't you use file per process always? Because it's easier to write, it's easier to implement, all these sort of things. The performance looks good, even up to high core counts. Well, the problem is that if you use file per process and you want to do something with the data after, afterwards, you're going to have to reconstruct the data, probably, for any analysis, right? You're going to have, if you've used 12,000 cores, you're going to have 12,000 files, each with a fragment of the data in, um, maybe not in the order you want them in. So you're going to, at some point, have to read all that data in, reconstruct it, and re-synthesize the data in a format that's useful for analysis. Um, if you're just going to use file per process for checkpointing, then that sounds fine. But if your run crashes halfway through, then you can only restart with a, a, a totally identical parallel decomposition, right? You can't restart with less cores, uh, more cores, uh, without some manipulation of the data first. So I guess that one of the it, it, file per process is definitely worth considering if you can live with these constraints. For example, say you, in checkpoints you'd never want to restart with a different decomposition, then file per process might be a perfectly valid way um, forward for you. But to do actual data analysis, it can involve a lot more work on the analysis side to reconstruct the data. One interesting thing we've seen in the data is that both of the schemes achieve a maximum of around 50% of the peak performance for both GPFS and Luster in production, which is I don't, quite, I don't think we quite understand where that 50% uh, limit comes from at the moment. That's one of the things we look, want to look into going forward. Um, in terms of single shared file, it can give excellent performance, um, once you get, especially once you get up to higher core counts, higher node counts, um, each, uh, because each I.O. Write, writes a single block of data. Um, it usually requires some, some significant internal communication to re reorganize the data layout. That's why you have to use um, the well-written parallel I.O. libraries to perform this reorganization and use the collective I.O. Um, so in MPIO, if you don't have the collective I.O. on, then your performance will be orders of magnitude less than the peak performance you can get by turning them on. Um, the, one, the, advance, the big advantage of this system is the data at the end comes out in a format you can use for analysis or reuse going forward. So you, for example, you can write um, a net file or an HDF5 file or even a binary file that is just portable and be taken in anywhere and you can um, do the do your analysis on it without having to reorganize the data first. Okay, so which scheme you use depends a bit on 
um, what you want to do with the data afterwards and what the particular constraints of your application are. So quick summary and look at some, some further work where we're going with this work. So if it'll let me click to the next slide, there we go. So as I always said, FARPA process is very simple to implement and forms well up to high node counts. And there's, but there's a probable cost in data reconstruction, but it may be useful for pure checkpointing, especially if you are, have a fixed decomposition for one reason, reason or another. Um, shared file, single shared files competitive at high node counts with the uh, FARPA process in terms of performance. Um, you have to use MPI collectives. You have to use um, maximum or high stripe counts on the lost up of file systems get the performance. Um, I haven't talked about stripe size in any detail here. Um, we did investigate the impact of different stripe sizes, but they have little impact on the performance for the uh, sizes of I.O. we were doing here. And there's still this maximum of around 50% of the peak file system performance, which seems to be independent of both Lustre and um, GPFS. So what we want to do in the future is try and understand where this 50% maximum performance limit's coming from. We need to look at the results for HDF5 and NetCDF on the systems and um, check that they match what we see from MPIO. We need to extend the bench IO benchmark to look at read performance, that was right. Um, we want to get some uh, benchmarks that are based on real applications rather than just synthetic benchmarks, although bench IO uh, is designed to be more uh, representative of user IO. And we're also, with the help of Cray, gathering um, lots of performance data on the Lustre file system on Archer. And we still need to do a quite a bit of digging into that data and use it to understand what applications are doing and how people are using the file system and what bottlenecks they might be seeing on the file system. Um, there are a few things that I discovered that were useful during um, this work. Well, not discovered, but I had used them before, but actually were key to get, being able to analyze the data. Um, both Python tools, because um, most of my analysis was using Python. And one was the Pandas Python Statistical Analysis Library. This was invaluable for me for exploring the data with multiple classification characteristics. So most of our data, we had right, perform, we had right performance, but it was contingent on a number of different things, such as number of stripes, uh, stripe size, file system size, different um, IO schemes and things like that. And actually, being able to deal with that multi-dimensional data, um, Pandas was incredibly useful for uh, doing that in a simple way and getting and exploring the data in a, in a useful way. And related to that, the Seaborn um, statistical plotting library for Python allowed me to explore the data visually. And you saw some of the plots today for into that, about clustering performance and understanding where where the performance comes from. And uh, it was very quick and simple to get. Uh, complex plots out of my complex data um, using uh, Seaborn. So they've been absolutely invaluable for to be able to analyze the data. So on my final slide, um, if you're interested in um, learning more about Parallel.io and understanding how to make it work for your application or anything like that, there's an Archer training course, which is Efficient Parallel I.O. coming up at the end of March at the University of Durham where the Cosma system was uh, is located. It's free for, an attendee, for all attendees, um, and you can sign up at, on the Archer training page. Um, we'll have access to Archer during the course, but the, uh, hopefully, as I've shown here, um, the lessons really you'll learn on the course about Parallel are pretty generic um, for all Parallel, for the two major Parallel file system technologies out there at the moment, which are uh, Lustre and GPFS, um, and the concepts apply equally across the two of them. So thank you for that. Sorry, it was, there was actually more talking, more talking than I wanted to be, but there was quite a lot of interesting data to show, and I thought people would be interested. So please feel free to ask questions either in the chat or um, using your mics, and I'll do my best to answer them. Sorry, I've seen said, well, we're, we're, we're muting my mic. Um, so we, you, you measured no count. Were you trying to use multiple cores on one node or was just one core per node doing the I.O.? No, so uh, all the nodes were fully populated. So all the cores on the node were writing simultaneously in all cases. Okay, thanks. But I, 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 to a first approximation, the, the I.O. does get aggregated on the node 
because um, they all act as a, each node acts as a single client usually to the file system. So there will be some aggregation of the um, IO data on the node before it's um, pushed out Actually, to the file yeah. system itself. Okay, so there's a question from David asking whether striping something you choose when submitting a job or is it in the code itself? So actually it's something you tend to set on a directory. So what you tend to do is set up um, your job and you could encode this into a job submission script if you wanted and create the directory where your data is going to be written to. And then there's a command which is um, LFS set stripe, which sets the directory. So if I set minus C minus one, would set um, maximal striping for the name directory. Yeah, you can interact with the API by linking the Lust libraries into your application, but almost, I, I don't know of anybody really that does that. Um, I think IOR, the benchmark does, it can link to link in that way. The problem, uh, the only thing to be aware of is that you can't, re it's difficult to restripe. So if you've already got an existing directory, just setting the stripe of the directory like that will not change the striping of the files within it that already exist. So you create an empty directory and then any files that are created in there after you've created it and set the striping on it will inherit that striping. And okay Harvey, is that on a, a per file basis essentially as well? And so it creates the file with the striping that you send over MPIIO. Okay. So if you want to learn about MPIO and hints, then come on the course in Durham, if, if at all possible, because that all that will be covered there. Thank you all for attending, by the way, and listening to me drone on.